Johnny Dollar. Johnny, you better come flying out here just about as fast as you can. Ah, who's that? Johnny, this is Red. Yeah, Red who? Well, you know, your favorite fishing guide. Red Barrett? That's right. Lake Mojave Resort out in Arizona? Yes, sir. Well, Red, you old scalawag, how are you, and how's the fishing? Just great. That is, if you know where the good holes are. And believe me, you do. Now, that's really a fact, Johnny. I really do. I guess I'm the best fishing guide this country ever saw. Yeah, and I suppose you think it's time I made another trip out there and tangle with some of those beautiful lunker bass. Well, now, Johnny... Ah, it's no good, Red. I, I just can't do it. Now, you listen... The way the work is piled up on me, I'm just about going crazy. I've been trying to get away for some kind of a vacation for weeks now, but I just can't do it. Sounds to me like you need it, too. Yeah, it's been a tough year, no let up at all. Pat McCracken over at Universal Adjustment Bureau, half a dozen of my other contacts. They've been begging me to take some time off, but I, I just can't, Red. I'm not on a regular payroll. I'm a freelance, so I have to take on every assignment that's handed me, whether I like it or not. Look, you mentioned Mr. No use, Red. So don't make me feel any worse by talking about it. Me? That was your idea. Huh? Did I say anything about fishing until you did? Oh, now, Wait. You mean there's some insurance matter I ought to look into out there? It was this Pat McCracken you mentioned that said I'd better call you. Oh, great. And he's the one who's been after me to take a rest. So, what's happened out there? Uh, that's the thing. It ain't what has, but what's going to happen. Yeah? Like what? Come on, get to the point, Red. Well, Johnny, when it does happen, well, it's going to be pretty tragic for Lake Mojave Resort. You mean somebody's trying to wreck the place, something like that? Much worse, Johnny. Much worse. Well, what is it? Well, I just don't think I ought to tell you over the phone. But, Red, unless I know... And if somebody was to hear me talking to you this way... Red, look. And anyhow, you'll find out soon enough when you get here, Johnny. And you won't like it. No, sir. Red, quit stalling, will you? Of course, if you just want to sit around up there in Hartford and let a terrible thing like this happen without even raising a finger... Well, I just can't believe you'd do that. Look, will you stop beating around the bush and... Red? Red? I can't tell you over the phone. It's too awful. Now listen, you old goat. But, Johnny, you... they say there's an airplane leaves New York City just about 12 o'clock noon. So what? So it'll get you in Las Vegas about 9.45 tonight. Okay? What do you mean, okay? I mean, just you be sure and be on it. And I know you. Oh, now, look, I can't... Goodbye, Johnny. Red! Oh, if that crazy old coot thinks I'm going to fly all the way out there just because he... And yet, if he was serious... CBS Radio brings you Bob Bailey in the exciting adventures of the man with the action-packed expense account, America's fabulous freelance insurance investigator... Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Winston tastes good like a cigarette should. Winston tastes good like a... Cigarette should. Winston gives you real flavor, full, rich tobacco flavor. Winston's easy drawing, too. The flavor comes right through to you. Winston tastes good like a cigarette should. A modern filter? Sure, Winston has it. But that's only the beginning of a Winston. Up front, up where it really counts, Winston packs exclusive filter blend. Light, flavorful tobaccos, specially selected and specially processed for filter smoking. Filter blend. That's why it's fun to smoke Winston, America's best-selling filter cigarette. Winston tastes good like a cigarette should. And now, act one of yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Expense account submitted by Special Investigator Johnny Dollar to the Universal Adjustment Bureau, Hartford, Connecticut. Attention, Mr. Pat McCracken. Following is an account of expenses incurred during my investigation of the Red Mystery Matter. 
That crazy phone call from Red Barrett. I know that wild old character pretty well. I'm fully aware of his faculty for stretching the truth, making a couple of mountains out of a molehill or two. And once or twice before, I'd wound up making the trip across the country just to wet a fishing line with him. And yet, those other times I'd fallen for his gag, I'd run headlong into serious insurance matters. Trouble with a capital T. And if he really meant what he said about something terrible impending at Lake Mojave Resort. Well, there was one way to find out. Expense account item one, $153, plane fare, Hartford to New York to Las Vegas, Nevada. Awesome beauty of the clear night sky over the desert, with its billions of stars twinkling in the black sky above, is something I'll never tire of. The stars seem close enough to reach out and touch them. As the plane hit the glide path down to the landing strip at the south end of Las Vegas, the myriad many colored lights of the city winked and sparkled like the lights on a gigantic Christmas tree. Yeah, from the air, Las Vegas, the fabulous city of chance, is just plain beautiful. I'd like to have stuck around Vegas for a while and tried my hand at some of the casinos and clubs along the gambler's alley they call the Strip, but I had other things to do. So, item two was 50 bucks deposited on a rental car. And within minutes after the plane landed, I was heading south and east across the desert, down toward Davis Dam, down to Lake Mojave Resort. The desert, mile after mile of nothing but sand and sagebrush and Joshua trees of tumbleweed and cactus, of high plateaus and broad windswept mesas. Here and there, the skeleton of some animal was perished in the remorseless, terrible summer sun. And then suddenly in the middle of it, the life-giving waters of Lake Mojave. At the south end of the lake, just above Davis Dam, is the resort, with its clean, comfortable motel, a good restaurant, tackle shop, and dock. Everything to warm the heart of a fisherman. Yeah, and in the bright light of the moon, I could see the lake itself, calm as a mill pond. That meant that unlike the cold and snow I'd left back east, here it was warm and perfect weather for fishing. It took a bit of self-control to keep from driving right on down to the dock. Instead, I circled the driveway to the office. As I pulled up to a stop, in spite of the hour, someone came out to greet me. It was my old friend Buster Favor, General Factotum at the resort. Yes, sir. Can I help you? Yeah, Buster. I think you can. What? Why? Johnny Dollar. Yeah, no, no, no. Hiya, Buster. Johnny, it's a miracle. I don't see why. When I get word there's trouble around here. Oh, then you know, huh? Buster, I only know that something but is about... the police haven't had a chance to get over here yet. The police? Johnny, I sure hope he's all right, that you can find him. Yeah, find who? What, Red? Red Barrett? You mean you didn't know? Buster, what's happened to him? Johnny, Red has... Well, he's disappeared. Oh. And I could be awfully wrong, but from the looks of things, Johnny... Wait a minute. You think somebody could have murdered him? Come on. I'll take you over to his room. You can see for yourself. Well, look, Red phoned me in Hartford, Buster. He told you me think that... think he had some premonition that something was going to happen to him? Well, that's just it. He didn't seem worried about himself. All he would say well, was... Well, it sure looks like he should have been worried, Johnny. You know... Oh, yeah. The room, a housekeeping unit, was a shambles. Clothing pulled out of the drawers and closet, as though somebody had ransacked the place looking for something. That stuff so part of the uniform as he was wearing while he was working, Johnny. How much personal clothing stuff he had, I don't exactly know. So, if anything... The furniture, though none of it was actually broken, was overturned, cluttering up the floor. On the electric range in the kitchenette with the pots and pans he'd apparently used to cook his dinner. Some fish bones lay on a plate on the table. Probably one of the bass he caught this afternoon. Poor old fellow went out fishing as usual, not realizing what was going to happen to him after he came back here and had to supper. Now, wait. Wait a minute, Buster. Yeah, Johnny? That he left here in a hurry is pretty obvious. Or his body was hauled out of here. But I still don't see anything to indicate he was murdered or even badly hurt. Well, look here, then. Look, Buster, you know as well as I do how unpredictable Red is. Well, I know, Always but... getting restless, always talking about going somewhere else, doing something else. I know, Johnny, Look, he's but... told me a dozen times about a gold mine he hoped to go to back there and work someday, 50 or 60 miles north of here, up near Lake Mead. 
He's told me about offers to work as a guide for other fishing spots. Johnny, you... So what makes you think he didn't just pack up and leave for some other place, some other job? Without letting us know and leaving things this way? Fred? Sure, sure he was. So unless you can show me some good... Oh. Yeah, Johnny. It's blood there on the floor. I'm sure of it. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, it's blood all right. It, it still hasn't even dried either. Yeah, I see. All right. When did you find he was missing? When Ham Pratt... Well, you remember Ham. The manager of this place, sure. Well, after supper, Ham came over here to talk to him, and, well, this is what he found. Do you know of any enemies he may have had? Red? Oh, no, sir. Of course, all of us used to get out of patience with him now and then. Some of the crazy things he'd do, the wild stories he'd tell. But uh, there wasn't one of us didn't love the crusty old coot. Same thing applied to everybody else who knew him. Then why? Why would anybody want to do him in? I don't know. I can't figure it out. But it sure looks like somebody did, Johnny. You can see the evidence yourself. Yeah, maybe. What do you mean by that? Red's phone call that brought me out here. If he'd thought that he himself was in danger, don't you think he would have said so? Yeah, I guess Red would have built it up, too. Would have made it sound real dramatic. Sure he would, sure he would. But instead he told me something tragic was going to happen to the resort. Like what, Buster? Like nothing I can possibly think of. But now, Johnny, this blood on the floor. Yeah. Hey, did Red have a car? Yeah. Where is it? It's gone, Johnny. Whoever did, well, did whatever they did to him must have used it to carry away his body. The poor old... Buster! I've just got a lead on it. Oh, Ham, come in. You see, I phoned everybody up and down the lake to look out for... Johnny! Ham, how are you? Buster's told you about Red? Yeah, and in spite of this so-called evidence around here, I still Johnny don't... Johnny simply doesn't believe that Red was murdered. But there's blood on the floor, the way things were left around. Or, Johnny, have you some reason for thinking he wasn't? First, I want some definite reason why he was. But look... Now, Johnny... If you want the truth, I think you've both gone overboard about this. Are you kidding? Give me a reason. A reason for killing him, for anybody killing him. Just one good reason. Well, now, Johnny... Is... Johnny, there's blood on the floor. Yeah. <sighs> Yeah, this. Hmm. What, uh, what is it, Johnny? Johnny? You, uh, haven't called in the police yet? Oh, I was just about to when you arrived. Don't you think I'd better call them then right away? Well, yeah, Johnny, why don't you do that? No. No? I've done something better, Johnny. I spread the word up and down the lake, all the way up the Colorado River by telephone. And listen, it's, it's paid off. And that's what I came in here to tell you about. Well? I just got word that a car, same description as Red Barrett's, that it was seen pulling off Highway 93 about 33 miles this side of Boulder City. Oops. What? What, Johnny? You want me to find poor old Red, huh? Well, of course, if the poor old fella's still alive. And maybe I will. And when I do, I have a sneaking suspicion I may have a score to settle with you two. Now, just a minute, Johnny. If you mean to imply that either of us did him... I didn't say that. Well, Johnny, what do you mean? You don't know, Buster? Well, if you think you can find Red and if I can be of any help to no, you... No, no, no. That's exactly what I don't want. Well, now, Johnny... Just let me work out this little mystery myself. Well, of course... No help, no interference from either of you. Johnny, this isn't like you. I don't understand. You don't, huh? I swear it. Yeah? We'll see. Act two of yours truly, Johnny Dollar, in a moment. Welcome, recording star Mel Torme. It's terrible trying to sing with a bad cold. So I always take four-way cold tablets to relieve cold miseries fast. Good idea. Tests of all the leading cold tablets proved four-way fastest acting. Four-way starts in minutes to relieve muscular pains, headache, reduce fever, calm, upset stomach, also overcomes irregularity. When you catch cold, try my way. Take four-way cold tablets. Fast way to relieve cold distress and feel better quickly. Four way, only 29 cents. Now, here's a word about another fine product of Grove Laboratories. To get rid of embarrassing dandruff in three minutes, change to Fitch Dandruff Remover Shampoo. 
Three minutes with Fitch regularly is guaranteed to keep unsightly dandruff away forever. Apply Fitch before wetting hair. Rub in one minute. Add water. Lather one minute. Then rinse one minute. Every trace of dandruff goes down the drain. Three minutes with Fitch and embarrassing dandruff's gone. At the same time, Fitch can brighten hair up to 35%. Get Fitch Dandruff Remover Shampoo today. And now, act two of yours truly, Johnny Dollar and the Red Mystery Matter. Suddenly, things had begun to add up. Yeah, from right in the beginning, when Red had mentioned over the phone that he'd talked with Pat McCracken at Universal Adjustment Bureau. And Red called Pat, or vice versa. And there was the lamp there in Red's room, apparently knocked to the floor in a struggle. But not even the bulb was broken. The clothes that were left, only the uniforms he'd worn while at work. Was that supposed to mean that the only personal things he had were those he was wearing when he disappeared? Hardly. Then there was that spot of blood on the floor. A fish scale, a single scale in the middle of it. I had no microscope to examine that blood. Probably wouldn't have known how to use it anyway. But I had a sneaking suspicion there was something very, very... Yeah. And knowing Red and Ham and Buster and Pat McCracken pretty well. Okay. The first thing I did after Ham and Buster left me alone was to look over the room again. And yes, one parcel of equipment that should have been there was conspicuously absent. I went down to the boat dock and found the old Arkansas traveler that Red had always used to fish in. Uh, it was empty. Absolutely empty of the stuff I knew he always kept in it. Johnny? Well, what are you doing up and around this time of night, Ham? Oh, just sort of checking up on things. Yeah? Or checking up on me? <laughs> oh, now, Johnny. Hey, uh, you, uh... Hoping to find some lead on Red there and his boat? I found exactly what I expected, Ham. Nothing. I don't understand. Don't you? Johnny, what goes with you? You've certainly been acting kind of feisty this trip. Yeah, well, I'm sorry. Now, if you feel you have some lead on Red on, on what may have happened to him, well... Yeah. Yeah, I think I have. And you helped to give it to me. I did. But there's no point in following it up for a morning. What, uh... What is the lead? No help, no interference, remember? Okay, Johnny, whatever you say. Um, no use doing anything till morning, eh? That's right. Then you, uh... Well, uh, Well, what? Oh, I was just thinking. Remember a couple of moonlight nights like this when you were here before, how you and I took the workboat a couple of fishing rods... How we plugged those deep coves just above the dam. Yeah. Yeah, we took some nice fish out of there, didn't we? Yeah. I'm going to be blunt with you, Johnny. You aren't yourself. You're a bundle of nerves. Been working too hard. <sighs> yeah, much too hard. Well, one great cure for that. Why don't we go out there and pick us up a couple of nice bass? Okay. Why not? Unless, of course, you feel you ought to do something more about finding Ray. I told you, no more until morning. I also told you I... Oh, I... I'm sorry, Ham. Let's go fishing. Sure, Johnny. I understand. Yeah, I... I guess you do. Maybe I had been a little feisty, as Ham had put it. And he was right about the fishing out there in the smooth black water with the bright moonlight overhead. When those two six-pounders hit my lure and I carefully played them into the boat, believe me, they did more to bring me back to normal than anything else in the world could have. That night, for the first time in weeks, I slept like a baby. Then, first thing in the morning, well, the whole thing really wasn't too hard to figure out. Red was a fisherman every day of his life. But I'd found no sign of his tackle there in the room or in the boat he'd always used. In other words, no matter how or why he'd left, he himself must have taken those things with him. Also his personal clothes and stuff, but naturally not the uniforms that belonged to the resort. The blood on the floor from one of the bass he'd had for dinner, carefully put there after he'd turned the room inside out. As for his whereabouts, Ham had given me the clue when he told me Red's car had been seen at the highway turnoff 33 miles south of Boulder City. 
That turnoff led to only one place, a fishing camp at the lower end of Lake Mead, known as Temple Bar. And when I got there, sure enough, waiting for me in his outboard, beside the dock, Red Barrett. All ready for you, Johnny. Why, Red, you rascal. Got an extra rod and reel and a bucket of live bait. You and me will go out there and slay him. Get in, Johnny. Get in. <laughs> sure, Red, why not? Ah, it's a boy. Here we go. Yeah, I just knew a smart man like you could track me down. Hey, you're working here now, huh? Well, I got kind of restless and thought maybe I'd make a change. And as long as Ham Pratt was willing... Then Ham was in on this plot to get me out here. Why, sure he was. And the terrible things to happen at Lake Mojave? Why, of course, Johnny. They've lost me, haven't they? <laughs> ah, you old son of a gun. Hey, Buster in on it, too? No, Ham's probably telling him about it right now. Probably showing him the letter he got from Mr. McCracken. McCracken? Pat McCracken? Yeah. Now... Maybe you better read this one that he wrote to me. Our first part's just the usual howdy do's, but uh, they're here. And read. I'm convinced a man can take only so much, even Johnny Dollar. And I'm afraid that unless he gets some rest and relaxation, he'll crack up one of these days. So if you and Ham Pratt can somehow contrive to get him out there for some of that fishing he loves so much, go to it. If he catches on, if he starts worrying about the expense, tell him it's on the house. Tell him... <laughs> tell him Merry Christmas. Sincerely yours. Well, God bless Pat McCracken. As for you, Red, you old reprobate. Johnny, there's a hole over near the jip beds where there's an old ten-pounder laying under a rock. Just wait for you and me. Brother, let's go. once said that the time a man spends in fishing is never deducted from his lifespan. And you know something? I, for one, am convinced that he was right. So, well, Merry Christmas to you all, too. All of you. Yours truly, Johnny Duff. star will return in just a moment. Every year, some Christmas celebrations are ruined by fire. A little precaution can prevent a Christmas fire from happening in your home. First of all, make sure your tree is on a firm foundation so it can't fall over. Then be sure to use only approved lighting. Wiring that's frayed may be dangerous. Replace it. Never use lighted candles. Let all the glow of Christmas come from within, not from fire. With a safe Christmas plan, here's an idea for Christmas giving. Almost Christmas, no time to lose. Lots and lots of gifts to choose. Give him, give her, a gift tip by Yardley. For her, an array of all new Yardley gifts. $1.50 to $13.50. A Yardley Red Roses Spray Mist and Soap Set, $3.50. All prices plus tax. Yardley. Give him, give her. A gift set by Now, here is our star to tell you about next week's story. Next week, a man, a girl, and a gangster. That's right. They add up to trouble for me. Join us, won't you? Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Johnny Dollar, starring Bob Bailey, originates in Hollywood and is written, produced, and directed by Jack Johnstone. Heard in our cast were Forrest Lewis, Barney Phillips, Alan Reed Sr., and Lawrence Dobkin. Be sure to join us next week, same time and station, for another exciting story of yours truly, Johnny Dollar. This is Dan Coverly speaking. Now stay tuned for Suspense, which follows next on the CBS Radio Network.